clients were looking to sell their well-loved but dated family home. You could tell a lot of great memories were made there, but if they really wanted to get the price they were looking for, they definitely knew they had to make some upgrades. Our goal was to completely redesign the home inside and out, top to bottom, to be the most appealing for the most amount of buyers. Now, when you first walked up to the house, it would be underwhelming. You wouldn't really notice it when you're going down the street. It was an off gray brick with a little bit darker shutters and a little bit darker front door and just kind of was a little blah. We wanted to freshen it up and the easiest way you can do that is with a coat of paint. So we used Benjamin Moore's White Dove on the whole exterior of the house. To add a bit of contrast to the white and as well as to tie in with the fixtures we had going on in the inside of the house and really bring this design together, we made sure to use black paint on the shutters as well as replace the eaves trough and downspout and roof with black as well. Now sometimes if you just have black and white it can look a little bit stark and we didn't want to have that feeling. We wanted somebody to come in and be feel welcomed by the space. So we made sure to also use our wood tones outside as well. We used cedar cladding on the posts on the exterior as well as on the feature wall by the front door. The existing front door wasn't very appealing and it didn't function very well. It also didn't bring in a lot of natural light. So we changed it out as well as the side light and we put in a brand new front door with nice clear glass and a nice clear glass side light to match. It brought in way more light to the space and it was a really welcoming front entry for guests or family. The general design for this project was to keep it light, bright, airy, and neutral. We really wanted to have a modern feel to the place, so we used a light bleached engineered hardwood floor throughout, and we also used Benjamin Moore Stonington Gray on majority of the walls. It's a nice warm gray that's still a neutral and is a good color palette to use where anybody can really picture their own design style in the space. Also, we used matte black fixtures and hardware throughout the house. Going to the main floor, it was very closed off. It was an open concept. It wasn't really great for entertaining. It was very traditional, which can be fine, but majority of buyers and majority of people really like the open concept feel. And the existing kitchen was well dated. It had older oak cabinets, it was a galley style kitchen, there wasn't a lot of countertop space, and there was a an eat-in area which can be really nice, but when you don't have a lot of real estate when it comes to countertop space and cabinetry, that might be something that you could do without. We really wanted the kitchen and the main floor to be an entertaining space. We ended up taking down the wall, replacing it with a nice big island. We also relocated a majority of the appliances to create a much more more practical working space and we made use of that previous dead space of the eating kitchen by adding more cabinetry and countertop space. Keeping with the light and airy feel we used a clean white shaker style cabinet. We wanted to keep it simple for the backsplash so we used the classic white subway tile. Not only does it look great with its clean lines but it's also very cost effective so you don't have to break the bank when it comes to backsplash. Because we had centered the stove between the two windows we wanted to add a little bit of visual interest when it came to the backsplash. So we used a marble mosaic tile to create a feature above the stove. This really added some detail and visual interest to the space and it also broke up the long wall of subway tile. To make sure the space didn't look too white and whitewashed, we went for a white quartz countertop but made sure it had some black flex in it. It added some separation between the cabinetry and the backsplash, added some texture and some visual appeal. We also wanted to add a little bit of glitz and glam to the space so we used a brushed gold finish for our hardware as well as our kitchen faucet. A really easy way to break up a monochromatic color scheme or add to a, a monochromatic color scheme is to use wood or natural materials. So we decided to use a wood floating shelf above the backsplash and we also decided to make the island a feature using textured and patterned wood on the front of it. It really helped to anchor the space and bring some warmth into that area. Now this main floor is perfect for being able to entertain or even just be able to be in the kitchen and and be with your family at the same time. Even though this house had two full bathrooms, one of them was near the basement and there's only one on the upper floor. So one bathroom for a whole family to get ready in can be a little bit challenging. We knew that this house had five bedrooms, which is great. But knowing that it had five bedrooms, we were able to have a little bit of wiggle room with creating an ensuite. So we 
took away a bedroom to give an ensuite and a walk-in closet. The main bathroom was very gray. There was a lot of gray. The toilet was gray, the tub was gray, everything was gray. So as much as we like gray as a neutral, we don't necessarily advise using it for everything. It just becomes one big gray blob. So what we did is we kept the same layout of the main bathroom, but we just took everything out. We added in standard white toilet, white tub, but we did go with a warmer gray, high gloss subway tile in the shower enclosure. And we used a marble finish matte ceramic tile in the floor. It really coordinated well and gave it a spa-like feel. The brand new vanity also looked great and tied in for the color scheme and the neutral look that we were going for. The basement bathroom was dated as well. It had old fixtures, the plumbing didn't really work very well, and it was more of like a den as opposed to a nice place to get ready, especially if you're gonna use it as a guest bathroom. It was our goal to create that same spa-like feel that we did upstairs. We kept it neutral with a textured gray tile, and we also used a nice, clean new vanity with bright lights. That way, no matter who was getting ready in there, it would be easy to do. We were so excited about adding an ensuite because we knew this would bring so much value for our clients. And we know that buyers love an ensuite. We used a wood finished floating vanity as well as matte black fixtures. In the shower, we went for a higher end marble mosaic tile as well as a custom glass enclosure. When it came to color, we decided to go a little bit bolder with paint and went with First Light, which was Benjamin Moore's color of the year for 2020. Now the bedrooms were a decent size, but there was a lot of wallpaper. And as much as I do love wallpaper, that wallpaper was probably about two decades too old. So we decided to get rid of it, as well as get rid of the existing closet doors that were didn't really coordinate with each other, they didn't function very well, so we updated all of that, as well as the light fixtures. There was actually no light fixtures. There was no ceiling lights. So that was a very common thing to have is no ceiling lights, but it makes it really dark. So we put in brand new ceiling lights, some semi flush mount drum style shades to give some nice diffused light and some nice warmth to the space. Now with the master bedroom, we know that with couples, space can be a premium. So we ensured that there was plenty of it. We had a walk-in closet as well as a beautiful double door closet in the main bedroom. The mudroom and the basement were definitely underutilized. They were dark spaces, drop ceilings. It just wasn't really a welcoming space to be in. And when you're coming in either on a muddy day or rainy day or snowy day, you want a place to be able to sit down and put your stuff. So we designed custom mudroom seating and storage to allow people to come in, sit down, take their shoes off, but also store their stuff in a practical way so that it's not out in the open. Now we decided not to go with the engineered hardwood in the mudroom and the basement because it doesn't really hold up well to a lot of water, which sometimes you get water in your basement and if you're walking around with boots and shoes and stuff, you don't really want that on a hardwood floor. So we went with a laminate floor, which definitely holds up better to the elements, but we made sure that it's still coordinated color-wise with the rest of the house. We wanted to make the basement a practical and livable space. So when you go down there, you are happy to be in the basement. Originally the basement was kind of dingy and dark and it had old vinyl tiles, peel and stick down there. And the laundry was kind of tucked away in the corner in the utility room. And it's like, it's an afterthought. And I know personally, I don't want to share my laundry space with spiders. So we made sure that we designed it out of the utility room in a nice finished space just for laundry to make that way more organized and just a more pleasant place to be. Because there's been such a big shift of people working and learning from home, we wanted to make sure we created a space for whoever the buyer is for them to be able to use it however they need to. So we made sure to create a study space. It's a separate space in the basement that's still nice and open, but it allows you to work from home or learn from home without having to convert one of your existing bedrooms. A brand new custom two-tier deck that included a new walkout from the main floor and then down to a lovely seating area at the bottom. Again, it's perfect for entertaining. If you can't tell, we love entertaining and you it would be a shame to not entertain at this house. Our clients were over the moon with this transformation. They loved it. It really turned their family home into an entertainer's dream. And we were definitely happy to be able to get them more than what they thought they would get for their home. When you're redoing a house to sell, it's really important that you do keep it neutral so that other people can envision themselves in that space and really think of making it their own. And I think we achieved that with this project.